Hi students, welcome to another session of my class. Today we are going to discuss a new poem, This Language, This Woman by Yasmin Gunnarton. Let us discuss something about this Yasmin Gunnarton. Yasmin Gunnarton, born on 1935, she was born in colonial Ceylon. Ceylon yeah, means the old name of Sri Lanka. So she was born in colonial Ceylon. She became a renowned teacher before migrating to Australia. Yes, she became a renowned, a famous teacher before migrating to Australia. She is a poet, a biographer, social historian and academic. And moreover, she is best known as a novelist. Her first two collections of poetry, it is Word, Bird, Motif. Her first two collections of poetry, one is Word, Bird, Motif and the other one, The Lizard Cry and Other Poems. These two collections are not worthy, important, that is very famous. It is not that two collections. One more question may be asked. That is, word, word, bird, motif, and the lizard cry and other poems. In recognition of her contribution to Sri Lanka and Australian education and literature, Gunnarton was awarded the Order of Australia in 1990. Yes, she got one award. She was awarded the Order of Australia in 1990 because of her contribution to Sri Lankan and Australian education and literature. So in recognition of her contribution to Sri Lankan and Australian education and literature, she got or she was awarded the Order of Australia in 1990. In her poems, Gunnarton examines themes like immigration and the nature of poetry. Yes, most of his poems dealt with the themes like immigration or the migrated to distant place and the nature of poetry. She considers herself lucky to have been born in Sri Lanka. Yes, I already told you she was born in colonial Ceylon. Colonial Ceylon, that is important. Once this Sri Lanka was a colony, colony of the Britishers. So she was born in colonial Ceylon. And she considers herself lucky to have been born in that she considers herself that she believes that it is a luck to have been born in Sri Lanka and to grow up and be educated uh, there. That it might mean that Sri Lanka is a golden period in the island's cultural life. Yes. And she has been. Uh, she has grown up and be educated there at a golden period in the island's cultural life. She had a lifelong admiration for the works of 18th and 19th century English writers like Jane Austen, Alexander Pope and Dr. Johnson. Yes, she uh, had a lifelong admiration that she respects or she loves or she had a lifelong admiration for the works of 18th and 19th century English writers like Jane Austen, Alexander Pope and Dr. Johnson. This is the basic details about Yasmin Gunnarton. She was born in Colonial Ceylon and she was born in 1935. And uh, she became a renowned teacher before migrating to Australia. And she is considered as a poet, biographer, social historian and academic. And moreover, she is best known as a novelist. Then her first two collections of poetry are important. That is Bird, Bird, Motif and the Lizard Cry and other poems. And she got uh, uh, award that is the Order of Australia in 1990 because of her contribution to Sri Lanka and Australia education. Then most of her poems dealt with the theme of immigration and the nature of poetry. And she believed that, yes, she considers herself lucky to have been born in Sri Lanka and uh, to grow up and be educated there at a golden period in the island's cultural life. And she had a 
lifelong admiration towards the 18th and 19th century English writers like Jane Austen, Alexander Pope and Dr. Johnson. Then let us discuss something about our poem, This Language, This Woman. The poem, This Language, This Woman was written at the time of the nationalist upsurge in Sri Lanka to overcome the colonial hangover. I already told you once the Sri Lanka was a colony of Britishers. And this particular poem, that is this language, this woman, it was written at the time of the nationalist upsurge. Nationalist upsurge in the sense means uh, the, uh, there is a rise in the uh, thinking and the nationalistic spirit in the mind of the people of Sri Lanka to overcome the colonial hangover. Yes, they want to overcome that uh, situation to overcome that colonial hangover so that it was written at the time of the nationalist upsurge that that nationalistic feeling was too high in the mind of the people of Sri Lanka at that time and she wrote this particular poem at that time that particular period period of the nationalist upsurge in Sri Lanka to overcome the colonial hangover and Gunnarton is part of the slender minority of anglicized Sri Lankans who value the language of the colonizer. Yes, she is part of the slender minority. Slender minority in sense means small in number. Uh, she belongs to a particular group of people that is anglicized to Sri Lankans. So Gunnarton is part of the slender minority of anglicized Sri Lankans. And they value the language of the colonizer. They value the language. This group of people, they value the language of the colonizer means they value English language. And in this form, that is this language, this woman, she takes up the task of defending the English language using woman as a metaphor for English. Yes. Why? she wrote such a poem it is because of or she takes up the task of defending or supporting the english language by using one uh, figure of speech that is metaphor here yes woman as a metaphor for english language she used woman as a metaphor for english language and here in this particular poem, she takes up the task of defending. That means with the help of this poem. And she wrote this particular poem in English. And she takes up the task of defending or supporting the English language using one figure of speech. That is using woman as a metaphor for English. Woman as a metaphor for English language. And moreover, she cautions the nationalists not to insult her in their ignorance and jealousy at not being able to have her as their mistress despite a brief interlude with her. Yes, she cautions or she asks the nationalists, that is Sri Lankans, please don't insult her. Her here in the sense is she, she has given that woman image to the English language. She considers it as her, a woman. Yes, so she cautions the nationalists that Sri Lankans, she asks the nationalists that Sri Lankans not to insult her in their ignorance. You don't know the capacity and potential of this language. You are ignorant. So please don't insult her in their ignorance and jealousy. Jealousy towards that language because it is the language of the colonizers. So please don't insult her. She asks the nationalists of Sri Lankans not to insult her in their ignorance and jealousy at not being able to have her as their mistress. Don't consider her as your mistress. As your, uh, like a second wife. Don't consider her as, a, as your second wife. That is, don't, please respect her. Not being able to have her as their mistress despite a brief interlude with the they cannot in any way understand the potential of English with its immense capacity for renewal and survival. You don't know the capacity and the potential of this language. 
please try to keep a distance from her or please try to respect her you don't know the understand you cannot understand you that is they cannot in any way understand the potential of language with its immense capacity it has immense capacity for renewal and survival even though you are trying to suppress her or oppress her it has immense capacity and potential to revive and survive so don't insult her in their ignorance in your ignorance and jealousy don't consider her as your mistress she defends english by writing in english she supports english by writing in english this form is written in english language which had the pride of place as the language of the imperialist in the bygone days of the british empire she defends english by writing in english which had the pride of place this english language it has a definite place a pride of place as the it is the language of the imperialist in the bygone days bygone means the earlier days of the british empire once once she was the queen yes because this sri lankans they were under the control of this britishers they are the colonized people and the english is the language of the colonizer so she advises the nationalists or the sri lankans not to insult english with the derogatory epithets please don't use bad words towards her so she advises the nationals or the sri lankans not to insult english with the derogatory epithets or with the bad words towards her please respect her don't consider her as your mistress it has immense capacity and potential to revive and survive yes and she wrote this particular poem in english language to defend this language and gunnarton has explicitly stated her stance on the controversial question of writing in english in this poem yes so many people or the so many nationalists asked her why you write in english language yes gunnarton has explicitly stated her stance on the controversial question of writing in english in this she wrote this particular poem in english and so many people asked her why you wrote this particular poem in english and she, here she has explicitly stated her stance her standpoint her view on the controversial question of writing that's why this is i know i respect her i love her i know the immense capacity and potential of this language that's why and moreover she wants to defend this language she wants to support this language that's why i am writing in this language that is this and that is her answer gunnarton has explicitly stated her stance on the controversial question of writing in english in this form she confesses that it was written out of irritation at the continual denigration of english by sinhalese writers yes she confesses or she expresses her feelings that it was written this particular poem was written out of irritation at the continual denigration of english by sinhalese writers some sinhalese writers they try to insult her or continually try to degrade this language and i wrote this particular poem as a result of the irritation irritation at the continual denigration of english by sinhalese writers who had no conception of its range and very little competence in it yes and moreover she stated that these sinhalese writers they did not know the immense capacity or the potential of this language they had no conception of its vast range and they had very little competence in this particular language that's why they tried to insult her that's why they used derogatory words towards her and it was written yes i wrote this particular poem because of irritation 
at the continual that is they continuously try to insult her through their writings these sinhala writers they wrote in sinhala language and they continually try to you try to insult her using bad words or direct derogatory epithets towards her and she confesses gunadan confesses that it was written out of the this irritation at the continual denigration of english by sinhalese writers who had no conception these sinhalese writers you had no conception no knowledge regarding the potential and the vast range of this language you had very little competence in it that was a feature of the literary milieu in sri lanka during the 1960s and 70s that was actually that was the condition or that was the feature literary feature of the uh, sri lankan writers at that period that is during the 1960s and 1970s they don't know much about this language and uh, the immense capacity and its potential of this language so they considered this language as their mistress they always try to oppress her and because of the irritation at the continual denigration of english by this singular writer she wrote this particular poem in english to defend english language and to uphold the value potential and the uh, vast range of this language try to expose that immense potentiality of this language to the whole world so this is the background of this part, uh, particular poem this language this woman from the title itself we can understand that this language is yes, this language this woman she here she used woman as a metaphor to represent that language that is english language she used one figure of speech that is metaphor so this language this woman here she gave woman image to english language throughout the poem she used yes she and her that is throughout she gave a woman image to this particular language this language this woman i think all of you understand this uh, introductory part of the poem uh, there is a homework for you and the homework is write a note on the yasmin gunadan and the background of the form write your homework and send back to me thank you have a nice day see you again